uh, I'm Craig Tomler from Startup Stories, and I'm here with Aidan from the Canberra Entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and uh, we're talking about his founder journey. Mm -hmm. So, Aidan, tell me a little bit about the Canberra Entrepreneur, what it was, and and, uh, and what you've been doing with it. Okay, um, the Canberra Entrepreneur is essentially an online magazine profiling innovation entrepreneurship in Canberra. Um, so we were working quite steadily on it for about a year and a half and built up quite a readership base for it and now it's been still going along um, more or less in fits and starts at the moment though. Just um, both the, myself and the other founder have taken on full-time work so it's just when able to <laughs> make contributions to it. Well you, you also stepped from it uh, into another startup as well. During that whole well, process of interacting with the staff and doing stories and going along to a lot of the events. Um, were then introduced to the Lighthouse Business Innovation Centre, who facilitated a micro credit loan for us, which is, um, I believe it's Westpac, and then they facilitated, um, and through that, it, well, we established a company, um, Startup Block, which is now the company behind the Canberra Entrepreneur. But mm -hmm. then we were taking that and moving into engaging kids with STEM, innovation, entrepreneurship, new technologies. Um, helped out Lighthouse Business Innovation Centre with one of their events and then we're making pretty much by virtue because I myself now work for the network um, by virtue of meeting people through the network and this space and at all the networking events I attend um, the, uh, there's a lot of potential and still is with the company because you know we're meeting with Questcon and the like and yeah that's pretty much where it's been up to. Okay cool um, so it's th that's called Startup Block? Mm -hmm. Really yeah, cool. cool. With a queue. Okay, great. So, um, so with your two startups, what made you decide to actually, you know, first start a startup in the first place, and then to found a second startup while you're still going in the first one? Um, pretty much just took a break from uni, um, went to CIT, and was just doing, what was I doing? Advanced diploma in business, and I um, was just was a lot of time in between classes, and I was just idly flipping through the internet and there was an advert for people to help write for what was then called Ignite magazine, which then went on to become the camera entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So that was my friend Krishan and a few other people um, who had that going and I stepped in and joined them and then very, well, within a month or two it was just simply Krishan and myself keeping it going. Um, mm -hmm. It went from Ignite magazine, which actually happens to be the same name as a, some large um, Roman Catholic online magazine, which was causing some issues, particularly with SEO, um, then became the Canberra Entrepreneur, and that was okay. much easier for people to well, work out what it was. Yeah, well, it's, ver it's very, very specific in, in terms yeah. of what you're trying to achieve, and, yeah. and you've done a lot with it as well yeah. over the last, oh, I don't know, 18 months, two yeah. years, because yeah. um, it it's been a, a great source for, for mm. information on, on what's actually happening in Canberra. Mm. No. So, um, so what then made you decide to actually go into that second startup? Was that the, the contact with Lighthouse and your exposure mm. to all the entrepreneurs through Seabrun? Um, yeah, yeah, more or less. It's um, probably been taken with the environment and with the things happening around, but also um, just realizing that perhaps this may all have an epoch. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's been the case internationally. If we look, um, you know, say in Europe, I. Being a blip, but I've heard that they're actually um, they're almost going to the point where they swing back towards larger corporations. Mm -hmm. I think there is a lot of opportunity, and you know, it'll definitely be around for not a certain period of time because I'd be remiss if I said that. But um, there is a, it, there's probably a right time to capitalize on it, mm -hmm. and um, I thought it would be best to go about and learn through doing. Yep, yeah, it's probably the best way to phrase it. Um, yeah, and just capitalise on the opportunities that were present at the time. For example, I'm um, able to interview people like the president of NRMA, um, ex-senator Kate Lundy, um, when she first became a director for the NRMA, and the current chief minister, Andrew Barr. Mm. Yeah. yeah, well, it, it got you a lot of access quite quickly. Yeah. yeah which yeah. is good. Mm. Yeah, like, it's great experience. Mm. Um, you know, when, when you have relatively low risk, because I'm assuming yeah. you're not married, you don't have kids, you don't have yeah. all those sort of pressures mm. yet. So, you know, you can take, you mm. know, risks that other people may think twice about. Mm. Yeah. Well, yes. I do a, a roommate to consider. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's still important. Mm. Yeah. No, 
So, um, so what were some of the challenges that you found um, with it, with your startups? Um, the hours in a day, pretty much. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, perhaps it's in that's my prior comment was alluding to. Perhaps it's in keeping with the times, but um, there's a lot of infrastructure and a lot of support service around entrepreneurship, innovation, and you know, it's now around entrepreneurship and innovation, not small business anymore. Um, and I think just interacting with those services was probably just such a fantastic leap forward because you know I didn't have to go anywhere. This, the events, the people who I was interviewing, everyone I was kind of almost this area. The innovation network was a um, catchment area for me almost mm -hmm. because these people would come through and I'd meet them. The connections we made and then it followed the correspondence. So it was pretty much just having the time to study, do it, work, <laughs> yeah. job, the other job, everything else. Yeah. Um, that and just because interacting with the network eventually I um, started working with the CBO Innovation Network so it was just managing that transition and you know, just balancing priorities, hats. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well it's, it's an interesting thing because you know mm -hmm. I think time is a big factor for mm -hmm. all entrepreneurs because there's never enough time to do everything you want to do for your business, mm -hmm. let alone everything else you need to do in your life. Yeah. But uh, you know, you and, and Christian and those others you mentioned mm -hmm. established was essentially a mm -hmm. a publishing business with a, a mm -hmm. regularly updating, you know, mm -hmm. um, newspaper, mm. if you call it that, mm. you go back 40 years and for someone to actually establish that, they would have required millions of dollars mm. in investment in order to, you know, deal with the printing presses, deal with, mm. you know, all the different, um, you know, stages, the graphic designers, everything mm. you needed to actually develop that sort of thing. Mm. But, you know, today you can do that with a couple of people and, you know, deliver it online, you know. But the time commitment, the money commitment's gone away, but the time is still there. No, oh, most definitely, yeah. Mm. And then it's opportunity costs, capacity matrixes, everything else, and you know, dealing with startups. There's, um, you know, again, with the support structures and everything around startups, there is a lot of connectivity to larger groups and organizations that um, can pay, whereas startups are. Well, that's it. Yeah. How, startups how do you. <laughs> yeah. Startups are, are, are a great. Mm. Um, you know, I suppose you know, a, a great, great place to build those dynamic relationships and get that energy and mm. get that inspiration. But they're lousy payers because yeah. they only pay money for things they absolutely need, which yeah. is as rightly so because mm. they're very, very short in cash. Yeah, yeah. And you took out a, a micro loan for um, you know for yeah. your second business, didn't yeah. you, through Lighthouse? And, mm. and you know that's you know it's either investment or it's family and friends or it's something yeah. around well, that sort of approach. Is that proverbial warning against the three fools, family, friends, and but family, friends, and fools? Actually, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, um, so what did you learn through uh, those two startups? Um, pretty much um, a lot of the finite detail around um, how to act as a company secretary, um, how to coordinate, how to write, how to publish how to go about approaching people and organizations for different things. I mean, um, I think like the one big takeaway, I'm not really fond of when people have, you know, messages that they learn to believe in this, that or the other, because I think you always have to be on, you always have to be agile and you always have to be two steps ahead and you know, not that you have to compromise your morals or anything, but you just always have to employ different elements of tact, mm -hmm. I think is probably the best thing. Yeah, so I just learned that um, being um, faculty, <coughs> um, polite and reasonable and accommodating and you know, also employing a bit of tact and having an agenda was always seemed to work very well. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, th those, are, those are useful things to learn. Most people don't learn them until quite a bit, yeah. um, I suppose, older but if they go through employment channels because it's harder to learn those things, I think, in a job. Hmm. Well, that, that's the thing because I, I, I find it fascinating at the moment um, the kind of search with innovation entrepreneurship because um, it's the foul mentality. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's just the most interesting thing to me because um, people are willing to tolerate, whereas you know, if you make a gigantic blunder, whereas previously you might have been shunned or in a smaller city like Canberra trying to interact in an even smaller business community, you might have just word of mouth might have killed you. Whereas now it's, you know, 
get back up and go again. <laughs> it's just yeah, finding so where the, the ends to that kind of mentality are and all that kind of thing. Yeah, so you're talking about it, you know the ability to fail and still yeah. continue and mm. be accepted. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, I, I yeah, I, I think that's a good thing if mm. we can if we can build more of a not so much a failure mentality, but a mm. um, but a recovery mentality. Because mm. um, I've always thought that it's not you know whether you fail, mm. it's it's more often how you actually recover mm. from failure. Mm. Um, and if we can, if people are better at recovery, then you go on to get you know better businesses yeah. and better quality outcomes. Because yeah. people learn every time. You know, yeah. every everything you do, you know, you learn from. Mm. No, no, most definitely. Um, as I just think it's very interesting to consider, particularly entrepreneurship, from say like a <coughs> sociological, f philosophical, so on and so forth. But so you're seeing a change. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great because because yeah. you, you do sit sort of in the hub of it because you know you yeah. now work for Seabrand and yeah. before that your startups were based out of here as well. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, you know of of uh, mo of all the startups I think I know here in Canberra, you mm -hmm. know. Yours and uh, your experience has been closest to the centre for the mm. longest, mm. so it's given you that uh, a different perspective to mm. that most people get, because mm. most people are very very focused on their own startup and what they've achieved, mm. whereas you've been able to see what lots of startups oh, have yeah. achieved. Mm. Um, is there is there anything you've learnt particularly from other startups that you've mm. seen that you know kind of stuck in your mind? I think we've probably seen such a wide mix, such a diverse mix really across a lot of tech as well. Mm -hmm. It's hard to pinpoint um, what exactly. I mean, the ones that are, of course are bull and will always go on to success in terms of startups are the ones that are scalable. Mm -hmm. So I've seen pretty much a lot of tech companies um, go quite well, but then there's been ones I wouldn't personally thought would work which have. So it's just it's really hard to pinpoint anything and work at again what even is attractive to investors. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well it it does change over time. I think. <laughs> it does change. Um, just not being technical myself, um <coughs> like I've had to, I've had to learn as I went writing about people doing apps and things like mm -hmm. that. But a lot of it is still quite esoteric to me. It's always hard to work out oh, okay, I can kind of work out the value proposition with that, but you know, it's going up there more a lot of the time because they're yeah. the one teaching me about it, that particular niche sector and how they're addressing it. Yeah, well, a lot of it, yeah, so it's, it's what problem are they trying to solve or, yeah. you know, is is it really a problem for people or is it just an inconvenience and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing, like, I mean, I guess, I, I don't know, I'm, perhaps it's being so close well, with the network and everything else that I haven't really seeing that many startups that um, they make to the point of you know, interacting with the accelerator or, incubate, or the incubator here that um, don't really have you know, things like the fundamentals down pat, you know, like what problem they are solving, how big is the consumer base, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, well, yeah, like uh, startups are often portrayed as very high speed and things happen yeah. very quickly and they develop very, you know, very fast. But mm. if you look at, you know, some of the largest success stories in startups, they can spend a number of years before they get to the point oh, of yeah. finding yeah. their right market and actually growing. And mm. some really large enterprises we've seen, you know, mm. even some of their core value propositions change, mm. Um, mm. like things like, um, you know, Amazon always springs to mind for me because they mm. started off as a shop and mm. they're still a shop, but mm. now they're also, you know, the largest, you know, sort of um, producer of other startups mm. because all these startups use their infrastructure mm. to build their own businesses. So it, mm. it's it's not a business that I, that necessarily, I think, Amazon was thinking of at the start, mm. but it became a factor because of what they built mm. that became, a you know, an even larger market for them. Mm. No, most definitely. Um, I think, uh, again, I think I've, lately because I've been working for the network and working on a host of other things, I haven't really had time to go out and engage with startups outside this environment as much as I'd like. <coughs> I think, again, just seeing the ones that are at well, perhaps the beginnings of the later early stage, maybe yep. it's um, the ones who are really just moving into that point where they know what they're doing to the point when they, you know, they're of interest or accelerator or incubator program. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, what advice would you give someone um, who is looking at stepping into startups? Um, 
so I had to really, really go through well, first picking your team, what people you engage with, to always think that that's going to be malleable, that you find the people once you know, money becomes involved or once so many hours become involved to let people get people to fall away to their other life commitments and that, to really engage with the ecosystem as much as they can because there are those support services, there are a host of you know, workshops, free resources which can really take you through how to again define your know, value proposition, what consumer need you're addressing and everything else and to just employ tact to um, go through and yeah, not make an enemy out of anyone. Yeah, don't burn your bridges. No, not yeah. at least. Yeah. yeah, and people in the community can be quite generous in terms of providing advice mm. and support if you actually you know, ask in mm. a reasonably nice way, mm. um, which I think is, it's, it's unusual. Like mm. You wouldn't necessarily find that if you're setting up a small business to go and speak to mm. your competitors and say, well, you know, can you help me out with setting these things up? Mm. They tend to be more competitive. And mm. I think with startups, they're all pursuing their own dreams, so they don't compete mm. quite as tightly mm. um, in these sort of ecosystems. Mm. And I'm, like, it's before my time, but 10, 20 years ago, I can't imagine that there would have been that thing. You know, you can approach, say, Perhaps there would have been business chambers and such. Um, uh, yeah. I'm just trying to think that back that far, but I there uh, were. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I don't think it's. I think it's relatively new that you can go somewhere and essentially get free advice um, that isn't you know, well, that is a learned opinion that isn't someone speculating or you know something like that. It's um, very much you know it's coming from a very knowledgeable place and you know it's people that are credited in different ways. Um, who are giving you very direct, intelligible <coughs> um, advice, and yeah, it's not people spitballing. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Look, I was doing startups twenty years ago, and yeah. there really was nowhere to go. There were things like the Nice program, uh, the New Enterprise, yeah. you know, incentive scheme, and that was. Mm. And I still know a few people who who still use that. It's still out there, and it's mm. very good if you're setting up a small business, mm. but it is not configured for the needs of a startup. You know, is distinct to a small business. It, it's oh. it's very much configured around the needs of a shop front or someone who is providing a geographic mm. based service. But um, you know, and those things are still around. You still have the chambers of commerce; they're oh. still around. They service their demographics quite well. But oh. you know, startups did need a different sort of infrastructure. Mm. Yeah, most definitely. But I mean, uh, there's all. I guess people can always do well to call government agencies like the ACCC and things like that, or just review their publications just to <coughs> be informed about best practices moving into business and oh, also partnerships are the devil <laughs> 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 that's one thing I learned as well and that's probably a good thing to pass on it's best to um, establish a business or a company outside of partnership yeah oh rather rather than an actual partnership as a as a business entity yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, par yeah partnerships so can be nasty yeah yeah so with Sorry? No, I didn't have um, any bad consequences myself, but it's just, um, it's precarious just from a legal standpoint, not even just in the terms of the shared liability. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, well, you've got unlimited shared liability. So you are mm. unlimited liability for what your partners do, which yeah. can be scary in itself, even mm. if you trust your partners. Mm. But then once you create a company and you know, those people become the directors, then it's, it's still joint responsibility, of course, but then it's, you know, that. The company is now the entity which is responsible for this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I, and and you know what you said about you know when money becomes involved, it gets a lot tougher. That's you know that's yeah. certainly also my experience as well. You mm. you do need to make sure you've got very good agreements that you've negotiated with mm. everyone involved. And mm. a few people I've interviewed have said that as well. You've got to get those things mm. uh, right early. And if you can't come up with a successful, you know, sort of how you're going to divide up the company, mm. then you're unlikely to be successful in actually, you know, executing the yeah. company. Yeah, most definitely. And that's the thing where, like, a passion project like the Canada Entrepreneur was, it starts to gain traction and become something that's becoming fruitful in different kind of ways, whether it's career advancement, in-kind services, or even money, then it, it's just uh, those times when then you have those awkward conversations or things just naturally settle and it becomes this way way and yeah it's yeah. just all good to you know have those awkward conversations and everything step in, uh, set in stone yeah yeah 
Okay, cool. So what would you have done differently? Um, not really that much, to be honest, because um, like it's all been very worthwhile. Um, in terms of still investigating in this, but I um, would have focused more on making it scalable, because uh -huh. um, there is a readership base and it is growing and it's um, very responsive and everything else. Um, and I have found various ways to monetize it in different business models. It's just um, gonna just come back down to the hours in the day. It's like getting jealous of people with the apps, with the tech, with <laughs> this. Yeah. Entrepreneur envy. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they don't um, have to spend 10 hours you know, with their reading glasses on, going cross-eyed, trying to work out, you know, did I um did I edit my own work correctly and that that never really is the case. You need to either wait a few days and come back or get someone else to have a look look at it. So yeah, I would have um well I still am exploring ways to make it more scalable. Mm. Well I suppose the other thing is, you know, you've entitled the Canberra Entrepreneur, so that in itself, you know, yeah. limits the scalability, so it's 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 really for one city. Oh yes, most definitely. But um you know, it's it's interesting because um We've still got larger growth that I can see um, than people who are moving into the same space now who are you know, from larger companies, organizations who have more disposable resources, income and such, um, who should be making a larger dent than we are, but, but haven't as of yet. So it's, it's interesting, but again, it's that hours in the day. Yeah, or it, it's it's sometimes it's about the traction and, and the passion actually yeah. shines through. Yeah, you know, because yeah. I, I think you know what the Canberra entrepreneur what it certainly does say is that Christian and you know your stuff. Yeah, um, and you've been doing it for long enough that you know where the stories are and how to actually tell them in ways that resonate with people. Mm. And other organisations step into that space have to you know rediscover that. Oh, most definitely. Um, but also, there's I think like once you sit in. You know, 10th, 12th workshop. <laughs> um, like I'd say, I've probably um, got that not like of a high level um, understanding, but um, definitely say I've got the basics and moving up to the intermediate level, more or less. Okay, great. Yeah. So, so what's next for you? Um, well, working for the network is fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. Very nice organisation. Um, so same with the network. Um, building my career here. Um, we have the website and the company, um, and then it just all comes back to those 24 damn hours in a day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm, gonna, I'm doing the best I can with that, but um, I'd say that's it really. I mean, it's, it, cause the camera rush move and even going and doing the company, Particularly as you know, there's that move away from the focus on degrees, and you can actually um, show your aptitude through doing now and mm -hmm. learning through your mistakes again. That foul mentality. Um, both the company and the website themselves, um, if nothing else, serve as living, breathing CVs. Yes. Um, so there's that alone, which um, working in the network is a benefit. But um, again, going to look through and try and make it scalable. Okay. Cool. Yeah, hours in a day. Yeah, and certainly you're going to keep on, you know, stick it. You're going to keep on working with startups, you know, yeah. in, in some capacity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, I love working for the network, and I love working with startups. So yeah, and as I said previously, it's a um, great way to get leads for stories, to meet people. I've you met. Know, uh, it seems it seems a bit absurd to think how I would have gone about um, trying to m meet. People and interview people like the Chief Minister Kate Lundy, the President of NRMA, and others. If I wasn't at the network and didn't have the help and assistance of the staff, um, yeah, the connections that yeah, the connections. get you through the doors, the introductions, the people championing the um, website, and all that. It really does it, that. That can put you twelve steps ahead mm. before you even open your mouth. That's why I think it's that people need to employ tact, be people, persons, and really try and cultivate their networks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, the network is key in mm. this space. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much no, for your time, Aidan. Yeah. That was fantastic. Wish you all the best in thank the future. You. Thank Thanks. you very much.